Good morning, residents of Seneca County and those who have joined us from other places. I thank you for listening in today. <clears throat> if you're by any chance joining us for the first time, I'm Beth Schweitzer. I'm the health commissioner here in Seneca County and we're coming from the Seneca County General Health District today. I always like to start with an update of what's happening locally and statewide. So today's numbers for Seneca County remain at 14 cases with one death, no one hospitalized and nine people have recovered. And at the state level, there are 23,809 confirmed cases. And if you remember, they also report probable cases too. So if you're interested, you can always go on the Ohio Department of Health website coronavirus and see what the uh, probable cases are, the number they're estimating. And then there have been 1,303 confirmed deaths. <clears throat> we have a lot of questions that come to us every day and we try to get those answered as soon as possible. And what we decided to do this week was to ask you who uh, visit us on Facebook, what questions you may have that you've been wondering about that we haven't answered. So I'm going to provide those answers to the best of my knowledge and my staff's knowledge. We've worked together on these and want to bring you information um, to try to answer those questions. One of the things that many questions revolve around is testing. How many tests have been done? How many are negative? Um, how many people are asymptomatic that have had tests? At this time, we have estimated between uh, Tiffin Mercy Hospital and Fosteria Pro Medical Hospital that there are approximately 250 Seneca County residents who have been tested. Now with that being said, residents have been tested in other locations as well. And when they're done at the other locations, unless they would have been a positive test, we likely would not be notified if they've been done in a <clears throat> neighboring counties or a hospital there or somewhere else. So about 237 of those tests have been negative, if you realize we have 14 that have been positive. How many were negative in the other areas, as I said, I'm not sure. Um, the question about asymptomatic cases, I do know of one of our uh, cases that was an asymptomatic case. They were tested at a location that did blanket testing of everyone throughout the entire facility where they were working. And I do want to remind you that if you're interested in testing, if you have some symptoms, contact Mercy Walk-In Clinic, and that is where they are doing the testing. Uh, it's based on the symptoms that a person presents with. Yesterday at the governor's press conference, uh, we were told that there will be some additional guidelines on testing that will be announced tomorrow on Thursday. So we are anticipating possibly some, cha some changes in the recommendations that will be made. We're going to be getting some test kits from the Ohio Department of Health, and uh, we will share that information on our website once the details, we, we know the details about that testing. We have received some test kits from the Ohio Department of Health, and those have been provided to long-term care facilities and some other congregate settings in the county where there are a number of people living in, in one setting. One of the questions that's been asked is how we're staying at such a relatively low rate of cases compared to our surrounding counties. One thing we know that has contributed to that is the fact that we have not had any major outbreaks in any of our congregate care facilities here in the county. Um, and those outbreaks have occurred in some of the surrounding counties making their numbers higher. And what I'm referring to are places like the long-term nursing care facilities and correctional facilities. We have had a few residents of, um, of these, just a, a couple that have tested positive, and those appear on the Ohio Department of Health website. They update those on Wednesday, so you can always check there if you're interested about that. Uh, I was asked if how many healthcare providers have tested positive for COVID-19. And I, I'll be honest, I'm not really sure. I, I know of a couple healthcare providers that, that have had positive tests, but um, again, they may be healthcare providers that work in our county but live elsewhere and have been tested elsewhere. So we may not have the exact numbers of healthcare providers we have working here in our county that have been positive. One of the things that helped keep those numbers low in our long-term care facilities was the fact that um, our nursing care facilities, 
excluded visitors very soon in the outbreak. Uh, they also dedicated special wings for those who do become ill. They do uh, very consistent monitoring of both residents and uh, workers for symptoms. And so that we believe has been, they're very, very proactive in keeping those cases at a low number. We know as of yesterday's press conference that several more businesses, types of businesses will be opening this Friday, May 15th. We were already told that uh, salons and spas could open, but they also added those who provide massage, uh, also tattoo and piercing facilities will be open on Friday as well. And sometime in the very near future, the governor, we are expecting him to make announcements about fairs, outdoor recreational activities, and events, fitness centers, and gyms. So we're gonna be listening for that this week. One of the things that's been asked by several people is why so many people can be allowed in certain stores, yet can't, we can't have a traditional graduation ceremony. And why don't I go ahead and open things up since our count of cases is relatively low? What I'm going to do is follow the guidelines given by the state. Those have been uh, guidelines that have been determined to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. And another thing I do is when I'm asked a question is uh, confer with the other counties in our area. We try all of us to make our recommendations very similar as we feel that is important to do so all of our citizens know exactly what's going on, what can be open and what can happen. In regards to graduations, the information provided to schools several weeks ago by the, Depart the Ohio Department of Education was that all ceremonies be done virtually. However, the governor did loosen up those guidelines somewhat, and he gave recommendations, uh, including the fact that virtual would be the safest, but also some type of drive up ceremony or a walk through graduation in the gymnasium with just a few people um, present family and just a few people from the school. And what happened was the superintendents in Seneca County developed their plans for graduations based on those. We did not make the decisions. We are not the entity that didn't allow traditional graduations to occur. And if you remember, the most recent guidelines still limit uh, gatherings to uh, 10 or less. We've had questions about restaurant workers being required to wear masks. And according to the guidelines provided in the most recent order that was put out last week, was that all workplaces have been asked to have their employees wear masks. So yes, restaurant workers are included in that, except for those who work in the kitchen over a grill or an open flame, and that's because of safety reasons. And that's one of the uh, items that if it has to do with something to do with the worker's safety or it's against regulations within their particular occupation, they may not be wearing those. Another question is about the information that's been coming up about the safety of wearing masks. And for about a week, I've been looking for research online that uh, indicates if those uh, stated health risks are valid or not. When I'm doing research, I always look for websites that are credible, and I especially like to look in medical journals to see if there have been any studies done. And I have not been able to find any medical journals in which studies have been done. And that's important to me because that explains the methods that are used to conduct a study, how many people are studied if they were chosen at random, and other um, information that you need to go have a good sound stat good sound study. There were several articles I saw about uh, there being a concern about carbon dioxide accumulating, uh, maybe people becoming low on oxygen, questions about if those masks become wet or damp from prolonged wearing, does that allow germs to accumulate? I think what the best advice I can give regarding that, since I did not find studies that I felt like that were valid, uh, that I could quote from. Keeping those masks clean properly is very important. Um, you don't need to wear your mask everywhere if you're going out to do errands. Uh, if you're between errands riding your car, you can take that mask off. Um, there's no need to wear one if you're with a family group. If you're in set areas that there are not lots of people, 
for example, outdoors in the park, you don't need to wear those. And cloth masks need to be cleaned after every outing. You should not bring that home, take it off, lay it on an unclean surface, and then pick it up and wear it again the next day. They should be cleaned properly. And just as I'd said before, when people are asking why we don't go ahead and open everything up, we are following the CDC's guidance, the governor's guidance, and Dr. Acton's guidelines regarding what can open when, and that's what we base our advice on. There also was a question about how much medical waste from New York is going into the landfill. I can tell you that the material coming from the East Coast is what we call construction and demolition debris, debris from buildings that have been torn down. And the landfill doesn't have any contracts with the companies that dispose of contaminated medical waste. The only materials that might be included would be incidental medical types of um, supplies. For example, let's say a building that housed doctor's offices was torn down. There could possibly be some medical supplies such as a syringe lying in the back of a drawer in a built-in cabinet in that building. But that waste would be only incidental types of things. Today we have Mir Chahandru from the Mental Health and Recovery Services that's going to speak to you now. We're looking forward to hearing from Mir Chah. Good morning. Uh, Beth, thank you, for, thank you for having me. I think uh, um, mental illness and addictions are, are also very important topics during, during this uh, difficult time with, with COVID-19. Um, what I do want to let the public know is that all of our local providers started and implemented telehealth services. So anybody uh, still looking to access behavioral health services and don't feel comfortable seeing somebody face to face, we have telehealth services available to our community residents. Um, also, um, back to a little data, as um, according to, to our data and all the information we have, we don't have any current behavioral health clients that we are assisting that we know tested positive for COVID-19, as well as uh, all of our providers, we are not aware of of any local therapist or, or mental health uh, worker or, or addiction worker who tested positive for COVID-19. Now, some of our agencies do have employees that sometimes work in different offices, which often can cross county lines. But again, we don't have anybody in Seneca County that we are aware that tested positive for this. Um, a few weeks ago, we implemented some new uh, policies regarding recovery housing in Seneca County. Um, we stop accepting new clients for approximately two, three weeks. However, we are back to normal, I will say. So we have accepted and um, actually a few clients this week, early this week. So anybody looking for recovery housing, please contact our office and we can link you with, with local recovery housing services. Um, same thing when it comes to treatment services, both inpatient and outpatient. Uh, we work with many inpatient facilities in Northwest Ohio some of which temporarily also stopped accepting new clients, but they are back to normal accepting new clients for detox or, or other inpatient services. So if you need, if you need help with, with detox services uh, or residential treatment, please again contact um, our office and at the end I will give you um, the phone number. Last, I do want to talk about local recovery support groups many of whom um, change from face-to-face -face or in-person to more virtual support groups. Um, again, we have that information on our website and our Facebook page. Uh, please follow the Factor Recovery Support Group in Seneca County. I know they provide a, at least weekly support group meetings on their Facebook page. Our goal as an agency, again, is to support all of our residents in need of behavioral health services, access the, access the treatment they need, we do want to make sure we, we have the resources to support our local behavioral health providers. We did our best to, to provide them with PPEs, make sure uh, everybody feels comfortable if they have to go to a face-to-face -face appointment. At the same time, we know that our providers are facing some difficult times um, due to budgeting during these difficult times. As you can imagine, um, some of the billable services um, have, have really been reduced. 
uh, and um, anybody in need, I, I think the, the, the most simplistic answer I can give is anybody in need of any behavioral health services here in Seneca County or in Northwest Ohio, please contact our office at 419-448-0640. We do have a crisis hotline that's available 24 seven. Uh, at the same time, we also implemented a hotline that's available 24 seven for healthcare workers and first responders. So we try to, to make sure all resources are available for community residents. Again, office number to contact us is 419-448-0640. If there are questions, I'm sure you guys can submit them to Beth. And if they are related to mental health or addictions, I can, I can help answering those questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mircea. Glad you joined us today. And we know that uh, mental health is very important during times like this, and of course, important at, at all times in our lives. So thanks for your information. And we'll be back again next Wednesday to talk to you again. Thank you for tuning in.